everybody. Welcome back to another very special Valentine's edition of Let's Paint Live. My name is Emma Panuski, and tonight we are going to be painting this very special, like I said, Valentine's Day themed painting. It's called Love Potion Number B Mine. So just like always, I want to remind you guys that we will be painting with our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, which comes with an assortment of Folk Art acrylic paints and a 10-piece artist variety brush set. And the great thing about that kit is that once you pick it up, you can go through our whole Let's Paint Live library, which you can find at platonline.com slash let's paint. We have dozens and dozens of really great classes where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour, and we do them all with our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit. So once you pick it up, you will have hours and hours of really great, valuable um, lessons to choose from. So before we get too into our Let's Paint Live tonight, I do want to say that Dylan Estes is in the studio with us. So if you have any questions or comments throughout our live stream, make sure to comment them down below. And he will be looking through all of your comments and questions and uh, talking to you guys and relaying some over to me. So let's go over our supply list to make sure that you have everything that you will want to have to paint along with me tonight. So. Um, our painting surface is this 10 by 10 wood panel. Plaid actually makes this surface. It's a really, really great versatile surface to have for painting. And then from our Let's Paint Live kit, we are specifically gonna be using berry wine, apple red, bright pink, ultramarine blue, navy blue, classic green, daffodil yellow, wicker white, and then tonight, um, I'm going to be using our 10-piece Artist Variety brush set. So that's like an assortment of flat brushes, round brushes, liner brushes, all of that good stuff. I'm going to be using a blow dryer a couple times tonight, so you'll want to have that handy if you're painting along with us. But if you're having trouble keeping up, then um, this will live on right here where you found it, so you can always go back once the live is over, press pause, rewind, and paint at your own speed. I'm also going to be using a pencil and a piece of chalk. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I'm going to apply some navy blue to my palette. And I'm gonna be using a three quarter inch flat brush to base coat my whole entire canvas with navy blue. I would love to know in the comment section what all of your Valentine's plans are. Maybe you're having dinner with your significant other or you're getting breakfast with a friend, maybe having a painting night, maybe you already celebrated Valentine's Day, so you're kind of over it, you're not doing anything tomorrow, but we would love to know all of that in the comment section. We got a comment from Madeline. They say, hello, Emma. Happy Valentine. Thank you, Madeline. Happy Valentine's to you, too. This is the first Valentine's activity that I am doing this year. I haven't really celebrated any type of Valentine's Day with a party or really anything like that. So it's exciting to break in the Valentine's spirit with this painting tonight.
Okay, so now would be the time to also go ahead and paint the sides of your canvases. But just for time's sake tonight, I'm going to leave that be and just focus on the um, front facing side of our canvas. So now I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush and then give this a good blow dry. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and blow dried your canvas, we are going to do a little bit of sketching. So I called out either using a piece of white chalk or a pencil, it's really up to you. Um, I prefer to use white chalk just because it wipes away really easily. Of course, you could always paint over your pencil, but um, that's just my preference. So feel free to use whatever you prefer. And we are going to start and uh, start to sketch out our vase here. So the shape that we're going to go for initially is kind of like in half of an oblong oval. And I'll show you what I mean. So starting about two and a half inches from either side of our canvas, we're going to go up and then cut in and then come back down. And we want it to be fairly symmetrical. Also, the great thing about using a piece of chalk like this, if you don't get your shape right the first time, you can just go back in again um, and you don't have to worry about erasing any pencil lines. So, once you've gone ahead and made that shape, we're going to kind of meet in the center here and sketch the neck of our vase, just like that, then top it off. Okay, and if yours is not symmetrical, that's totally fine. Um, if you're struggling with this step, maybe you're not the best drawer, you can always cut this out on a piece of paper, fold it in half, and trim it a little bit to make sure that it's really symmetrical, and then you can trace it onto your painting. But I don't want you to worry about it being absolutely perfect. So once you've gone ahead and done that step, next we're going to apply some apple red to our palette. Okay, and I am going to take my number 12 flat brush and we're going to go ahead and fill in our vase with that apple red. So as you'll see when you're painting your apple red into your vase, navy is a tricky color to paint over and then have that top color be op super opaque initially. But the great part about this painting is that we're painting a glass vase, so actually having it a little bit transparent works in our favor. So we're only going to want to have one coat of this apple red.
Okay, so one more time, I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry my canvas after washing my brush. So now I'm going to add some wicker white to my palette. And I am going to take a medium sized flat brush. So I am working with a number 10 flat brush. I'm going to dip my brush into my wicker white and I am going to show you guys um, a really cool painting technique. Maybe you've used it before, maybe you have it, but we are about to do some fly specking um, in the background of our painting. So this could get a little bit messy, so make sure that your workspace is covered. Maybe grab a sheet of newspaper or a magazine, something you um, are not concerned with getting a little bit messy um, because... I want your workspace to be nice and clean by the end of this. Okay, so with our wicker white loaded onto our medium sized flat brush, I'm gonna hold my brush like this and I'm gonna rake my thumb through the paint on my uh, bristles. And I'm gonna direct it at my canvas and keep loading more white as you need it. And once you can see, once we rake the paint um, with our fingers, we're getting this really subtle, soft, speckled pattern. That's kind of giving the illusion that our love potion is uh, living in a bright, brightly filled starry sky. Okay, so that is one way to achieve a speckled effect um, that's a little bit more sparse and you get some really pretty um, small specks. But if you want to get some larger uh, speckle, speckles in your pattern, then here is another technique to achieve that. So we're gonna reload our brush again. And we're gonna get a bigger brush and we're gonna hold the brush that is loaded with paint above our bigger brush and we're gonna tap. Okay, and I am pleased with that, so now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my medium flat brush. canvas back. All right, so next step, we are going to mix a, a little bit of our wicker white with our apple red. So I'm looking for a ratio of about two parts wicker white to one part apple red. To make a kind of soft rosy pink color. 
that's going to become the inside of our vase. Okay, so the first stroke we're going to make is kind of where our water ends in our vase. So starting a little bit above halfway, I'm going to swipe across, kind of creating a little bit of a divot as we go down and touch the center of our vase and then we're gonna come back up as we're meeting the other side of our vase, just like that. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest with our light pink all the way up to the top of our vase. And don't worry about leaving any red at the, um, the sides of our vase here because we're going to go back in with our apple red later and fill those lines in. We have some more comments that... Um your fly specking in the background kind of looks like some comets. It does, which is yeah. Cool. yeah. And then um, we had another comment that they like your teaching technique uh, with ratios and math. Thank you. Helps them break it down. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Jesse Jennings, who's another great artist that teaches on our Let's Paint Live series, she always says that um, everybody can paint. You know, when you look at somebody like Jesse, who's been painting for a decade, you think, oh, I could never do that. But you absolutely can. And I really believe that a lot of it just has to do with um, maybe the way that you've been um, hearing how to paint. You know, it takes a it takes a different way to teach everybody something. Does that make sense, Dylan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody so, learns differently. Exactly. Everybody learns differently. So I'm happy that that resonates with you. Okay. So um, now we are going to go ahead and blow dry this really quickly. Okay, our vase is shaping up nicely. So we're almost done with it actually. Now I'm going to go into my apple red again. I said don't worry about getting the sides of your vase because we're gonna hit that again later. So I'm taking um, my number two flat brush. So I, I prefer to make um, thin lines with a really small flat brush, but if you feel more comfortable using a liner brush or a small round brush, then of course feel free to use that. I'm gonna dip my small flat brush into my apple red and I'm just going to really highlight the outline of our vase. Okay. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer that you guys can see it really well. You see how we have this really faded red line here that's kind of giving our vase um, more dimension and it's making it look like it's kind of popping off of our canvas. We're going to go ahead and paint in that line right now. So I'll leave that there so you guys can get a good look. But it's kind of like a mirror of this line that we painted with our light pink. 
So starting where our light pink starts at the corner here, we're going to mirror that line and go across. Just like that. And then I'm going to rinse my brush. And I told you all we're going to be doing quite a bit of blow drying tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and take my blow dryer again and then blow dry this really quickly. So now, I don't know about you guys, but that light pink color that we went and mixed earlier, I used uh, all of it when we painted in our light pink. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some more. And just a reminder, that's about two parts wicker white to one part apple red. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and mixed that light pink color again, we're going to offload our brush, which means that you can see I have quite a bit of that light pink color on my brush. I'm going to wipe it off on a paper towel or whatever you are using tonight until there's really not much paint at all. So we have like about that much paint on our brush. And I'm going to carefully take that paint and swipe it over that red line that we painted. So you can barely see it anymore, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush again. Okay, now taking um, our number six flat brush we're going to dip our brush into that light pink color and you can see we're going to go ahead and um, paint the direction of our stems. You can see we have a little bit of pink there. We're going to paint that in next. And you can see they're going in all varying directions. Some are a little bit longer than others. Like that. Okay, so now you can either take um, a liner brush or a round brush and we're gonna mix some paint again and we are going to make this mix this really light pink color. So taking some of that light pink that we just mixed, we're going to add some wicker white into that. So that's like one part of that light pink to one part wicker white. And we're looking for a really beautiful light pink color. And this is going to be the color that we use to paint in some highlights that we have on our vase. So I'll show you guys where we are painting the highlights. So a little bit here. Coming all the way to the top of our vase. Mix actually a little bit more wicker white in that so that it really pops. Perfect.
I'm gonna follow that red line that we kind of blended into our background. Kind of giving some highlight to the water in our vase. like that. Okay, and then again I'm going to rinse my brush. Okay, so now we're going to introduce a new color to our palette. We're going to add some classic green to our palette. Okay, so now we're gonna paint in the stems of our flowers that we have in our Love Potion vase. I am taking a number one liner brush. Oh, before I get ahead of myself though, let's go ahead and uh, mix up a little bit of paint. So I'm taking about three parts classic green to one part navy blue and together this is going to make a really beautiful deep rich green okay so now that that's mixed i'm going to take my number one liner and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to follow these pink lines that we painted and we're just going to follow those lines and make a straight of a line up to the neck of our vase as we can. Um, if you want to go ahead and sketch this out before you touch your paintbrush down, totally feel free to do that. And one little tip, if you feel like your paint is dragging a little bit, um, one thing, I love painting on wood panels, but sometimes wood is so absorbent that it wants to take all of the moisture from your paint. And so when you're painting an extended line like this, um, sometimes your paintbrush does want to drag a little bit because the wood is sucking up all that moisture. So one tip I have for you guys is to dip your paintbrush into your water basin and then just mix a little bit of that water into your paint. Okay, just like that. All right. So now we are going to paint some of this greenery that you see. It's such it's a really beautiful deep green color. We're going to paint some of that greenery that's just kind of falling out of our uh, vase of flowers and making it look abundant. So we're going to have some greenery that's kind of falling over itself on our vase on this side. I'm going to go ahead and mirror that on the other side and still keeping with our number one liner brush. 
Going to have some coming up here. Making sure that it goes out far enough because we want to account for our big flowers. We're going to paint some lines up here. Okay, so once you've painted kind of the layout almost of how you want your bouquet, we're going to go ahead and paint some little leaves on some of our greenery. So um, we can go ahead and practice this brush stroke onto our palette paper if you want to have a little bit of practice. But essentially, so if this is my, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So if this is my stem, I'm going to apply less pressure at the um, bottom of our leaf and I'm going to apply more pressure as I come to the center. So less pressure and then press down a little bit as we meet the stem. And as you'll find out, the more pressure that you apply to your brush, the wider your brush stroke is gonna be. And the less pressure you apply to your brush, the thinner your brush stroke is gonna be. So we're kind of playing with that um, to achieve the width that we're looking for for our leaves. And for every leaf you do on one side, I want you to go ahead and mirror that on the other side. And as you see, as we're coming up on our stem, the bigger our leaves are going to get. I'm going to do it on here as well. Then our last one up here. As we come more towards the center, we don't really have to worry about putting leaves there because our flowers are going to cover it. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush and then go ahead and blow dry this really quickly. dokie nice and dry so next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more wicker white to my palette because I am lacking some wicker white so if you need to do the same go ahead and do that and I'm gonna take my number 10 flat brush make sure your brush is nice and dry and we're gonna go ahead and paint these white flowers that you see on our, in our bouquet. To do that, I'm gonna dip my number 10 into my wicker white. 
And you can see I have one kind of down here and then one up here. So you can place your flowers wherever you would like to, but that is where I placed mine. So I'm gonna follow that. And you can practice the stroke on your palette paper if you'd like, but I'm going to do one big C stroke like that, making a little C or a comma, if you will. Coming in, and that's our first petal. So coming from uh, the center of that, so right here, we're gonna do that same motion again, making that C and swooping around. Fill that in. Then one more to round it out at the top here. I'm going to do another one up here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. So I'm gonna pick up my number six flat brush now, and I want my brush to be really dry, so try to get your brush as dry as you can with a paper towel. Okay, so I still have a little bit of that light pink color that we mixed to get the um, top portion of our vase. So if you don't have any more of that, just a reminder, it's about two parts wicker white to one part apple red. And taking that light pink color, I'm going to dip my brush in it. And starting at the center of our flower, I'm gonna touch down and I'm going to push out and kind of pull up. So touching down, pushing out and pulling up. And if your brush starts to pull, we actually kind of want that because as you can see, we get that really cool kind of faded effect as we're pushing up and pulling out. And if your brush starts to run out of paint, that's okay. Kind of play with it and see how that affects your brush strokes. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this guy over here. Brushing out and pulling up. And then just in a clockwise motion, going all around our flower, the center of our flower. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, actually we don't have to rinse our brush just yet. Next we're going to go ahead and add some berry wine to our palette. And it's okay if you have a little bit of light pink on our brush. We're gonna dip our brush into our berry wine and then in the center, using that little flat brush that we are using, we're gonna paint the center of our flowers with berry wine. Just making a little circle, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush again. Okay, so next we're gonna add some 
brilliant uh, ultramarine to our palette. And I am going to do a little bit of color mixing. So this is going to be a ratio of about two parts of that ultramarine to one part wicker white. I'm gonna take my number 10 flat brush. Okay, and with that beautiful, really is a very pretty color. With that beautiful blue that we just mixed, we're gonna take our loaded number 10 flat brush and we're gonna paint some of those more blue circular flowers that you can see in our final painting. So I'm gonna paint one up here. And one down here, kind of in the middle of our two white flowers. And we're just painting a circle. Like so. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. Now we're gonna do a little bit of color mixing. So I'm gonna take some of my wicker white I'm gonna mix it with that ultramarine color that we just mixed, and I'm looking for a ratio of two parts wicker white to that blue mixture that we just, one part of that blue mixture that we just mixed. Until we get a really light kind of periwinkle color. And now, holding my brush perpendicular to my canvas, I'm gonna paint kind of little C strokes all in the inside of our circle. And you'll see it almost kind of looks like a little cinnamon roll with all of its little divots and folds. Like so. Same thing with our other guy. I like to start at the outside and work my way in. Like that, okay. And um, before rinsing my brush, I'm going to take some navy that we applied to our palette from earlier, and I'm gonna mix that into our little periwinkle color that we mixed. And I'm gonna mix about a 50-50 ratio of that periwinkle color to navy. And, you're, and you'll see we're kind of mixing up Still a blue, but a different hue of blue. More of like a robin's egg blue. And we're gonna do that same technique. Almost painting in our little cinnamon roll with those little C strokes. like that okay so now I'm gonna offload my brush I'm not gonna rinse it quite yet and um, we're gonna paint the centers of these flowers with some navy blue so I'm gonna load my brush with some navy blue what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hold my brush perpendicular to my canvas and spounce 
which is really just kind of going in a dabbing motion in the center of those flowers with our navy. We don't want a whole lot of paint on our brush for this technique. And we're just dab, 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 dab to make the centers of those flowers. I'm gonna rinse my brush again. Okay, last flower. Final color we are going to add to our palette is some daffodil yellow. We're gonna mix it with some of our wicker white. Um, I'm gonna be using my number six flat brush. And the ratio that we're gonna use is one part daffodil yellow to one part wicker white. Okay, and we're gonna paint some really cute little heart-shaped uh, blossoms or petals on our two green stems that we have coming here. So, I'm gonna kinda do a C stroke and then come down and then mirror that C stroke, come down. And you can feel free to practice that on your palette just like that little baby C stroke up top come down and then mirror that again come down Just like so, super cute. Okay, we are nearing the end, you guys. I'm gonna rinse my brush again. And now we're gonna paint this little white label that you see on the outside of our vase. So I'm gonna dip my brush, my number six flat, into my wicker white. And we're gonna go ahead and paint an oval. So I always say, work smarter, not harder. So if you wanna flip your canvas a little bit to make it easier for you, then um, please feel free to do that. Okay, so around, about here, so following in the center where the neck of our canvas is and kind of where our stems intersect, we're gonna paint that oval. And just one thing to keep in mind, make sure you give yourself enough room to write a word inside. I got a little blue in there. Just like that. And one last time, we're gonna go ahead and blow dry our canvas.
Okay, so the last step, we can go ahead and um, paint a word in the um, label of your love potion. So really, it can be any word that you want it to be. You can, it can be love, it can be the name of your sweetheart, it can be whatever word you want it to be. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the word love. I painted a more there, but let's switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna be using navy to paint in the word, but you can really use whatever color you want from our painting tonight for your word. Add some fresh navy to my palette. And so one thing that I always like to do whenever I'm painting a word on something, I like to start with the letters that are in the center to really center my word, make sure I give myself enough room, and then work outward. So I'm gonna start with one of my center letters. I'm gonna choose M. And also I am working with my number one liner brush. Starting at the center left, I'm gonna make some tall, skinny letters. And this is another one of those scenarios, you guys, where um, adding a little bit of water to your paint will probably go a long way. You know what, I started saying that I was gonna paint love, but then I already started painting a more. I guess that's really just what's in my heart. And of course, if you want to draw this on your canvas and then fill it in with paint, feel free to do that. And with that, you guys, one last thing to do, I'm gonna sign my painting with some, this pretty kind of Robin's blue. And we are done. So thank you guys so much for tuning in with me tonight. If you are new here, then welcome. Um, we host a uh, Let's Paint Live. Um, paint night, yeah. Yeah. We paint night every Monday. Paint night every mm -hmm. Monday. Um, make sure to go to platonline.com slash let's paint to see the full gallery of all of our previous Let's Paint Lives. Like I said in the beginning, we have so many for you to choose from. I encourage you guys to pick up our Let's Paint Live kit. Once you go ahead and pick that up, then you can paint along with us for every single um, Paint Night and Let's Paint Live lesson. Um, make sure to tune in uh, next Monday night where we will be um, painting a painting in just about an hour again. Am I missing anything else, Dylan? No, that we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for 